So, Heather, how can I tell if my small group is growing spiritually? Oh, gosh. How can you tell if your small group is growing spiritually? Um, I think the first question to ask is, are you growing as a leader? Um, because if you're growing as a leader, then there's a good chance that your small group is also growing. Because uh, I just I believe that growing people grow people. And so if you're growing as a leader, there's a really good chance your small group is growing as well. And if you're not growing as a leader, um, then it's highly possible that your group isn't growing uh, either. I, I think this is the most important question in group life because it's what we're all about. It's about helping people grow. But it's also the most difficult to measure uh, because transformation happens so slowly um, that I think it's important we look at the little things. Uh, we need to measure uh, and count the little wins that we see uh, in the people in our group along the way. So some of the things that I kind of look for, um, one, I look at the fruit of the Spirit. Are the people in my group growing in their love and their joy and their peace and their gentleness, kindness? Are, are those fruits taking root and becoming habits in the lives of the people in my group? Um, I look to see if my group is practicing the one another's, love one another, serve one another, forgive one another, honor one another, accept one another, encourage one another, all those one another commands. In the New Testament, if my group is practicing those, uh, then that's an indicator to me that they're growing spiritually. Um, I, I look at the depth of prayer requests that are shared because uh, I think the, the kinds of, of things that the group is praying for and praying with one another about is important. And, and not just what's shared, but also how are those followed up on? So I know my group is growing when they're praying together, and I know they're praying together when they come back the following week, and I hear one group member say to another group member, hey, uh, I've been praying for you this week. Uh, how did that job interview go? Or how did that doctor's appointment go? Or whatever it is that's, that's been the issue. Um, I look at authenticity and sharing, how deep are people willing to go. Uh, I, I look at how people are engaging one another in the group. Um, one of the trends that I've noticed is that in some groups I lead, particularly in the beginning, People in the group, when they're talking, they're primarily talking back to me as the leader. And then at one point, they're, 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 at some point, there's a shift where they're talking to one another. And then there's a point where they start talking with one another, which is a little bit different. It's not just that they're answering questions or engaging as a way of kind of getting their answer out, but they're actually communicating with one another. And I think that's an indicator of community and also depth. Um, I think it's really important to look at some of the firsts. Uh, the first time somebody prays out loud, uh, the first time somebody shares something kind of deeply personal, the first time somebody in the group challenges another person in the group, I think those firsts are indicators of spiritual growth. Um, I think what's happening outside the group time, whether that's people engaging in life with one another or how they're applying what they're learning, uh, are people coming back with stories and markers of how they've applied the stuff that we're talking about in our small group. Um, I think all of those can be indicators that spiritual growth is happening in our groups. And I think the challenge is, as a leader, our primary role and responsibility is to, or one of our primary roles and responsibilities, is to look for the fingerprints of God at work in our group, look for those markers of growth, and then be able to relate that growth and celebrate that growth uh, within the group, so it's something that we see replicated. Very good answer, very thorough. Um, as a follow-up of sorts, do you ever do any kind of self-assessment? Like, do you ever, or is it is it mostly about the leader trying to recognize these like sometimes really subtle moments that occur? Yeah. Or after the group. Yep. Uh, self-assessment, as in like within the group itself. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. There, there are times depending on the on the nature of the group. Um, where I'll throw an assessment in at the end of what we've learned, how we've applied it, uh, how we hope to continue growing in those areas. Because the last thing we want in our small group is to have a book that we've written a bunch of answers in that we then put on a shelf. Mm -hmm. And if this stuff isn't taking root in our hearts, we're not applying it, it's not changing us from the inside out, then we've just gained a lot of head knowledge and we've not really been transformed. So um, I did a series one time on uh, on discipleship, just I mean, just very basic, what does it mean to be a person who prays, who is engaged in the Word, who's serving their community, who's you know ministering their neighbors, that kind of stuff. And then at the end of it, we did an assessment. I mean, it was like 10 questions in each of the areas that we had 
talked about. And then at the end of that, everybody, I met with everybody in the group to say, hey, where is it that you most need to grow? And what does that mean for your next step? Whether that means, um, you know, what we need to talk about in group next or what, what maybe other group you need to get into in order to take that growth that you need. Um, and then I, I do a really nerdy group uh, at NCC. I do a Theology 101 every semester. And it's really fun. I do an assessment at the beginning of the group um, to look at where people land on different doctrines and how that plays out practically in their lives. And then I do another assessment at the end of the 12 weeks um, asking the very same questions about where do you land on this. Um, but even more importantly at that point, how is this playing out in your life? Because, uh, you know, on some level it doesn't matter what you think intellectually if it's not being played out in your life. So I think finding a way to incorporate some of those assessments, whether it's an end of the, the, the group or end of the study kind of assessment or something that you're doing all along the way to make sure this stuff is making a difference.